Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Modern Web Podcast. My name is Tracy at Lady Elite, and you can uh, follow me on Twitter at Lady Elite. I'm going to be your host today, along with Ben Lash. Um, and we are sitting here. We're so excited to talk about VR, web VR, and all the VR things. Uh, we have two amazing guests today. We have Aisha Bull and we have Martin. And I want to go ahead and let you all introduce yourselves first um, and just, you know, what you're doing in the space, etc. So, uh, Aisha Gould, do you want to go ahead and go first? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Aisha Gould. Uh, I work at Narval uh, and we do Angular consulting. But previously, I used to work at Autodesk uh, on a um, web VR authoring tool called Play. And you are a Google developer expert for web technologies. Tracy is a Google developer expert. We are experts together yeah, and uh, actually martin as well so <laughs> <laughs> yay <laughs> so martin who are you <laughs> <laughs> so um i'm geekonaut on twitter um just substitute the e's with threes because username was taken yay um i am also a google web developer expert uh started off as a developer expert for polymer not doing that much polymer anymore but i work for a small company called archaeologic and we are building a platform that allows you to bring real-world spaces and furniture into VR and 3D and AR on the web so that we are making your lives or developers' lives easier to get going with things. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm collaborating with Mozilla and the W3C a bit here and there um, on making WebXR better for everyone. Yes, I'm in love. I mean, I just... I remember at the last Chrome Dev Summit, we were hanging out, and I was just blown away by some of the stuff you could do. I mean, it's very, very awesome. Yes. Can I ask a quick question? Yes. But where's, where is Martin's unicorn? Like out Oh, there? his onesie. Where's your onesie, Martin? I could get it. It's literally around the corner, but uh, <laughs> stretch, right. stretch. It's Sorry, awesome. I, I can't do that. Um, but I do have a balloon, not a unicorn balloon, but I have a little Oh, little ladybug, <laughs> little ladybug. That's that fantastic. works. That's good. <laughs> so that, that's my so, friend, so that I'm not too alone here in this room. <laughs> anyway. So I think the first question, um, be, you know, because I think uh, VR in general, you know, I mean, Ben and I want to pair on it, more like I want to pair on it, and Ben is very excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the best way to get started, because, you know, it's going to be, Ben's going to become an expert in, like, the next three to four months. Yeah. I thought, I thought you were going to say three to four minutes. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yes. But anyways, y'all, how do you get started? What, what do we do first? Do you want to answer that? Oh. Well, there are so many different ways to start it. Um, so I, I'm going to prepare a web VR course for front-end masters in May. So maybe you can come and be my student. Um, that's one thing. Um, I think A-Frame is the easiest thing to start with. But there are also tools like Sumerian and the Autodesk Play that makes it easy to get in and get the concepts uh, down first. Um, some of the concepts that people are not very familiar with if they never work with 3D is, you know, uh, working with different materials, having shading, cameras, and lighting. And all those things take time to understand. So it's a good idea to play with it without worrying about the code first and get a feeling of it. and then. Once you understand what you need for a whole scene, uh, then maybe A-Frame is a great place to start. And uh, I haven't done anything with A-Frame, but maybe Martin can talk uh, more about it. But it's basically a component-based library. You just drop in a scene or a camera or a light, and um, it's there for you. You don't have to worry about m most of the stuff, right, Martin? Correct. Yeah. I mean, it depends also on where you're coming from. If you have some Unity experience, that's a good way to get started because the concepts kind of transport as well. Um, it's not necessarily the right way to like keep going, but that's one way. If you are more interested in content and world creation, um, then I highly recommend two wonderful VR apps if you have the hardware for it. Um, you can use Ah, oh, what's it called? Tilt brush from Google that costs a bit of money, but not it's actually not that expensive. That lets you draw a world in VR by literally putting on the goggles, taking a controller, and then just drawing in the space as you do. And uh, you can draw with like music, you can draw with fire, you can draw with water. Things that you normally can only do on acid, basically. You can do that in VR with tilt brush. <laughs> 
And so they this, um, did you know Ben was an artist and he is an artist? I did not know. So <laughs> hey Ben, how about you try out like one of his French ladies? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the South and yeah. Okay. Wow. Nice. I, I think that's the phrase, yeah. So, wait, what kind of what kind of equipment do people need to get started there, right? Like so. Um, yes. So for these these two applications are tailored towards the more high end H, uh, VR hardware. So that's the HTC Vive or the Oculus Rift. So um, if you have one of the two, then you can use Tilt Brush. Um, then you there's another the Google Daydream View. What about that? Not sure if you can use that. I uh, pfft, I haven't tried that because honestly. I used Tilt Brush when it was for free, and it was quite a good, but I have moved on since, so I'm not exactly sure if that still works uh, with Daydream. But then there's another app that's called Google Blocks. Uh, Google Blocks allows you to also, in VR, construct things from simpler shapes. And like basically, you're, you're chiseling away from a box or from a cylinder or a sphere, and then you're building your, applica uh, your, your application, your content, your 3D model. Uh, in VR. So Google Blocks and Google Tilt Brush are two applications that are giving you a feeling for how to create content and how to work with your VR environment. That's kind of nice. Um, and if you talk coding, then I would definitely recommend uh, A-Frame. Because what A-Frame does is it's a library from Mozilla. And um, it wraps the entire concepts that you need in HTML custom elements. So basically, you're writing HTML about what you're doing and some JavaScript if you you know want to handle clicks and stuff. But um, basically, you're writing HTML, and what you're doing is you think about it as if you would be putting on a theater play or a movie. So you have a scene that is just a space. You have some light. You have a camera. Uh, and then you have objects that you put in the scene. And the syntax is really beginner friendly. There's lots of documentation. There's an amazing and very active community around it. So you can just hop onto their Slack channel and ask, like, what the hell is going on when I do this? And someone's going to ask, uh, answer you. Uh, Stack Overflow is also pretty active. So yeah, that's a great way of getting started. This is actually kind of amazing because I've been thinking about this purse I want since yesterday. <laughs> but Ben, <laughs> instead of buying it for me, you could just make one for me. Right. And, and I could just wear could, it with a little. You could just walk around with VR goggles on and pretend you have purse. Yeah, <laughs> like this. Uh, you know, we could do it in AR, and right. just, you know, I could just. It'd be great. Uh, I'd like pick up my. Parents. Augmented reality, but but for um, making you feel good about material possessions. I guess. What I'm saying is that the AR of things, like a mixture of IoT and AR is a. A rot. <laughs> <laughs> Well, one thing we we didn't even talk about is is icicles actually that not even sitting in a real room. That's that's all. Yeah. Uh, when and you are. painted the cat, it. the cat and everything. Cat is yeah, animated, and it's a very well done animation actually. <laughs> really awesome uh, holo deck you've got there, especially with the light and materials. I know, right? Yeah, I'm working with the physics. How, <laughs> how far how far off of a holo deck do you think we are with this technology? Like how how much longer until we until, until more people are, are enjoying um, uh, games and, and interactive experiences with, with web VR like to a very realistic level. Are we there already? Probably, yes. I mean, I've seen uh, network VR applications on the web. I actually have done something for JSConf US in 2015 where everyone that put on a Google Cardboard would basically be able to fly around a virtual room, like a virtual world that was shared with other people putting on the cardboard, and everyone basically saw the other people as flying horses, and then everyone just you know flew through space as a horse, uh, and that was 2015. It's three years since then, so hey, holodeck is basically there. It's just someone right. needs to make it happen. You've upgraded from horses to like tigers or something now. <laughs> Um, what uh, what are, so that brings me into the other question. But what are the practical applications of this? Like where where do you see this use, being used in the industry in ways that that help people or make make people more productive? I have uh, <laughs> I, I've been talking about this a lot. So uh, one of the question I get is 
is it really going to happen or VR is or VR is generally something like the flying cars that we keep hearing about but never going to happen but it is happening in many industries um and one of the most exciting things for me is in the medical industry and this month or next month uh there is an a, there is a conference just for web VR and medicine in LA which blows my mind i mean here we are in in Silicon Valley, we are still discussing if it's a real thing that's happening, and then medical industry just went ahead with their own conference. Uh, what they're using it for is uh, pain um, pain control, and also to calm calm uh, their patients in many other ways. And um, there was one application that I heard uh, being talked about was. Um, how to convince kids who have cancer to uh, go through the chemotherapy through playing a game and feeling like really they are killing the enemy, which is their cancer, which is such a cool idea. Uh, another very practical application that I recently heard about was from a um, from an airline. So when mechanics go through um, the plane, they are able to see with AR goggles uh, which parts of the you know which parts of the motor that engine they influence. what engine maintenance when they exactly they know when it was replaced when things go to expire and all those things are right in front of their eyes when they're looking at it and it's a very time sensitive thing they won't be able to keep that information in their mind or get it right away but they're looking at it right in front of their eyes so I think it's really really cool. Very interesting. Yeah. They would do that with like a like some sort of Google Glass type device, or yeah, the Microsoft the uh, Hololens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, okay. Yeah, those, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and there's Google's uh, excursions or ex expeditions or something like that that uses cardboards in schools to take entire school classes of kids to you know historical places or to see certain parts of the world that you can't easily see or just travel and through the universe and stuff like that. So you can use it for education as well. Um, we've seen art installations using it. There's a one, there's a pretty famous one from Zurich, actually. It's, it's right from here. I actually know the person um, behind it. Um, they built what's called Birdly, and it's a weird contraption where you lie down, you lie down on a weird contraption that looks a little like a reverse chair kind of thing you lie down there and then you put your arms on like specifically equipped thingies and then you start flapping and you get a vr goggle and there's like a huge fan in front of you that blows wind towards you and you, you feel like flying you're flying through san francisco for instance and if you like turn your your wings in a certain direction you start like going down and then the entire contraption turns you like down the wind goes faster then you turn your arms around again and then you go like up again and then the wind from the fan is less uh less strong and stuff it's quite impressive. It's a really, really weird contraption. It's ridiculously expensive, um, but it's a fun art installation. I'm, not, I'm looking at Tracy's gears turning right now, and I'm really glad that I'm not a mechanical engineer. Also, otherwise, I'm yes. I'm a friend that does a mechanical engineer. Is it so? Is it Bert B I R D L Y? Yes, Birdly. Yep. Ooh. That exists. <laughs> you can buy one as well if you have the necessary cash. Um, a mechanical engineer. You just buy it. Another thing is architecture and real estate because it's similar to software engineering. When you catch an error early on, it's cheap. If you catch an error already, really, or a mistake or defect really late, then it's really hard. So basically, if I draw something on paper uh, and I, I catch the fact that there's not enough light coming in into that particular room, that's really easy to fix because I just erase the line and fix it. But if it's in basically built in concrete, then that's really expensive to fix. So VR is an interesting application because architects can draw up a floor plan, um, then take, for instance, our tool, and then basically walk through the premises before they have even been built. And then they can go like, oh, no, wait, 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 no, this is wrong. Uh, and then fix the problem before it has turned into reality. That's pretty, that's pretty interesting. It's like well, when we went to Belgium, the, um, yeah, when we were in Brussels, that guy there, you know, in that square, one of the guys killed himself because he got the position of the, <laughs> do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, there's there's this church, and I actually made fun of it. I said, this is what happens when you design a church with CSS, but like, basically it was this church, This it, was, it wasn't a church, it just looked like a church. It was just it was a gigantic, beautiful building, building. But like yeah. the door, 
was off by like and five oh, no. six feet or something like that from like all the rest of the buildings. Like so everything lined up perfectly except for this door. <laughs> totally not centered and, and I guess that the uh, architect um, offed himself because of the, the shame of it. Oh no. That, that oh, would have wow. saved him back in the fifteen hundreds or whenever that yeah. was. Virtual reality is a lifesaver, I guess. Well, another question is maybe, um, you know, how do we, I guess, you know, you talked a little bit about us being able to create our own 3D content, but where do you, can you find pre-made 3D content as well? Yeah, if I, if I stink at making 3D models, but I really want to play with uh, virtual reality, like where would I find some good content? I right. Polycom, oh. is it? Uh, Am I remembering it right? Uh, yeah, Poly. Yeah, Google has a site uh, called Poly, which has really low um, um, size meshes, which is easier to work with, and it's more performant on the web. I really like it. I mean, I had a few AR demos with it, and uh, they come, they are really cool. Is it P-O-L-Y dot com? Poly dot Google dot com. P-O-L-Y dot Google dot com. Uh, it's funny because actually it ties back into the two tools I mentioned. Um, you can share your 3D models that you created in Tiltbrush and uh, blocks and upload them to the internet for other people to use them. And that platform where the things land when you say share with the, with the world, that is poly. So that's where these models come from. Uh, I think you can also so upload them, but I'm not sure. Like from other tools, I'm not sure. You can also ask uh, Ben to just learn how to model and model it for you. Well, he's definitely going to. I've You're been a model. I've been working on my modeling career. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, and ask ben. Go ahead, do it. Come on, you know you want to. I'm gonna do it. You know you want to. Do it. See? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can I do? Hey. <laughs> She's been working out. Yeah, yeah. I need to work out more. <laughs> Not all right. Let's see. So, what other questions do we have? Um, you want to ask the next question? Uh, yeah, yeah. So there's so there's web VR, and then there's another very popular technology called Unity, and they, they seem to compete with each other. Can you can you tell us what the differences are the between Unity and web VR? Mark. Hmm? I guess I should direct these questions because. <laughs> <laughs> You're both, you're both so polite. You're just waiting, which is which is lovely. So, all right, um, I'll I'll take this one because um, it's one that I get, I, I keep get being asked. Um, Unity does have a WebGL export ex uh, option, and it also supports, as far as I'm aware, to export into um, WebVR, and it probably will at some point soon also be able to export into WebAssembly. The downside of all of this is that Unity is a game engine and comes with a lot of cool stuff and supports pretty much all sorts of uh, input devices and stuff. But it's not really using the web technology. It's basically just it happens to execute on the web, but it's not actually a web application. So you have to download the entire runtime for Unity first, which means you're literally seeing a loading bar like you would see in old Flash applications. And that might take, depending on the device you're on, might take anything between 20, 30 seconds to a few minutes, depending on connection and device type. Yeah, I don't know how you serve the web, but I know that most of our users would have been gone by that. So it makes sense to look at applications that are specifically made with web technologies and not just happen to run on web technologies, such as A-Frame, um, where you can do things like progressively loading. You can give some sort of uh, space already, and then you could load maybe a few buildings and a few objects, and maybe the furniture comes in as it gets downloaded from the net from the from the network. So that does help make the user see something and experience something as soon as possible, versus having to wait until it's ready to immerse the user, right? So that's the biggest difference that I see between the two. But by all means, if you're not into web technologies at all and you want to get some VR on the web, then get started in the city. It is also not free, right, uh, Martin? Uh, it is. I think it is free. Oh, is it? I, thought I think so. Unreal 
Origin got became available for free a couple of years back, and I think Unity went oh shucks, uh, and then is now also free. I think. This is what I know I about technology. People just keep competing. Like I'm pretty sure. Pay them if you use it commercially. Yes. Yes. That's so, yeah. That makes sense. I, I've, I think I've played a few like mobile games that were written in Unity. Now that I think about it, some of the fancier games that I've played on my phone. Yeah, I think most of the top ten Android games or mobile games in general are Unity games. Cool. That's amazing. I, I mean, I wanted to the other day. I mean, I just keep getting distracted right now. I'm trying to figure out how on earth the draggable API. I don't know. <laughs> just it's a hot mess. I mean, <laughs> this draggable API. Ben or Jay and I have spent like four hours on it. We're just like, what? Or actually, Jay. Jay really loves. Jay tries to get very, very uh, technically correct with this. I'm stuff. like, oh, stop. Um, so uh, let's see, uh, Martin. Earlier we were talking, and you were saying that there is um, WebX WebXR 2.0. Tell us a little bit about this one. I'm really, really <laughs> so yes. Um, basically, in the last yeah, more or less half a year, Web VR, the API itself, has the standard actually the standard proposal has settled down a little bit uh, in version 1.1. However, before they made the jump to 1.2 or 2.0, they had a lot of feedback coming from Microsoft, because Microsoft has the mixed reality headsets, which technically are VR headsets, but they are unifying VR and AR, right? So with this, with this kind of headset, you can't really be sure if you are or how much on the spectrum you are towards VR or AR. So they said, look, basically we need 90% of our, we need all of this and a little bit more to make this work with AR. And then Web AR, or actually AR Kit and AR Core came out. So people were like, yep, AR is now market ready because many, many people have it available now to them or will have it enable, uh, available soonish. So how about we're not making more Web VR work, but we're actually considering how we can incorporate augmented reality as well. So what do we have to do? Or where do we have to move our API towards uh, to accommodate AR as well? So that's why it was renamed to, and I'm now very incorrect probably, I believe the working group is now called uh, WebXR working group. And I think the new API is called Immersive Devices API, but I might be wrong, and it might be the other way around, that it's the Immersive Devices Working Group and the WebXR API. It's one of the many. So here's a, here's a quick question. I can't believe we haven't covered this already, but how does uh, WebVR interact with the browser and what most people would consider to be the web experience? Through WebGL? Is that the... Right. So if I'm a, I guess what I'm really asking is, as a user, what you know, what browser would I need to use in order to to have web VR experience? Uh, how do I, like, how would I hop on the internet with my brand new uh, virtual reality device and even witness anything with, with this? Yeah, it doesn't even have to be you know a fancy one. Even with the cardboard, there are so many different experiences, right? Even when you open up the Google Maps, it, uh, I think they have 360. Uh, uh, pictures that you can look at. I was taking a lot of them with you guys when we were at uh, NG Cruise. And um, there, like most of the browsers, well, Chrome, uh, I think you have to still enable it. Mozilla just went full in and it's uh, everything is available in Mozilla. And there are a few edge case um, browsers that you can download, which um, helps you see even better stuff so one of them is the uh, a chrome chromium um fork and you can experience the ar very well and i can show you tomorrow actually i had some demos in belgium at the ng belgium there, there. you go yeah and it, it keeps the list keeps going i mean chrome desktop actually doesn't support it right now but um there's a chromium fork that does it uh, chrome on android does it without um, any flags anymore. So I think like since 
oh, 56 or something. It does not really, uh, or 58 or something like that, or 60, whatever. It does not require uh, flags on, um, on Android anymore. So that allows you to use it with Daydream or Cardboard. Samsung mm -hmm. Internet supports it and has always supported it uh, since like a year or longer than a year for Gear VR. And on, if you run Samsung Internet on Android, it supports, I think it only supports Cardboard on Android, but I'm not sure about that. Edge. Are you sure about support the, uh, Yeah. It has a flag. Chrome Desktop has the flag, but it doesn't actually do anything yet. Yes. The ETA for Chrome Desktop is Q1 2018. Let's, let's see. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say any names of the people who have promised me things here. You know who you are, people out there. Um, no, but yeah. So it's it's hopefully gonna land soonish. They didn't want to to rush version 1.1 while they were already working on 2.0, so that's why it's it hasn't landed yet. But it's. I think at the moment we have a more or less stable implementation of two, uh, WebXR 2.0. It's probably going to land, which is hopefully soonish. Um, I'm actually really impressed with the Edge implementation on Windows. Um, the Edge implementation in Windows Mixed Reality is really nice, because in Mixed Reality, you can, you can basically scan the room around you or basically create a virtual room. And if you have a virtual wall, then you could put any Windows application windows on there. And you can, for instance, also pin a, um, an Internet Explorer to the wall. And then when there's a WebVR enabled application and you tap the web VR, web VR icon on it, and it actually like takes you in as, as if like it comes out of the window and goes around you. And I'm like, oh, this is a nice touch. Doesn't work with the HoloLens yet, but I hope that's going to happen eventually as well. Um, we'll see that. Really, really, we need to somehow find like $3,000 play with everything. No, you need to talk to Microsoft people because they're really, really nice people. And if you keep bothering them uh, by going like, can we have a test device? Can we maybe you have a test device? Oh, I would love to test this thing with a test device. They might be actually able. The only reason why we didn't get one is because we're in Switzerland. And in Switzerland, it's tricky. OK. So if we would have been in office somewhere else, it might have been easier. Why is it trickier in Switzerland? Don't get me started. I'm not a lawyer. That's the first thing I'm going to say for that. Microsoft has, has an office there. They, they, that's like yes, but they don't have a, the office. unit that uses the, um, the HoloLens. And because of taxes and customs and shizzles, it's not that easy. We are not part of the European you Union. That, you just see the customs thing. They're like, they're like, so you're bringing in a virtual reality? No, no, I'm not bringing in a, a reality. I'm bringing, no, no. We're going to have to tax this reality. You know how much reality costs we're going to have to How many square meters does your reality have? <laughs> <laughs> versions, though. Like, for AR, you can just use it, use your phone. There are so many applications that you can use today. And uh, for VR, there's cardboard, which is $20. Quite so, so like, if, if I'm on, like, um, like, Facebook or something like that, and somebody Posts one of those 360 pictures where I'm on my phone and I'm doing this thing. Um, that's that's technically aug augmented reality. Is that right? Uh, well, no, not augmented reality. You put it in your device and then you can be in it. It will be a virtual reality. Yeah, virtual reality. I mean, yeah. So I didn't even think about that. I just in my head it was just like, oh, it's a cool parlor trick with like stitched together pictures in in motion sensitivity, but. Well, um, Aisha, I have a question for some of the stuff that that uh, came out of Autodesk that you were talking about. Um, which one was it? I don't remember, but you were saying that the, uh, Autodesk has something that you can really easily get started with. Yes, it's, it's a drag and drop tool. So uh, the cool thing about it is it's very true to the original uh, APIs, and it was designed to be a... 3D web development tool. It wasn't even VR for starters, so it's. I think it's a good uh, code learning tool. Mm -hmm. So you drag uh, some nodes, which has all of the APIs that you can hook into, and uh, and then you keep putting them together that way. It's called Play, and there are a few other applications very similar to it. Actually, uh, Sumerian is one, and um, there's another one. Martin, you know, you know the name. Advisor. Yes. Yes. Um, cool. So you can actually um, have your models loaded in, and then you can have walkthroughs and all of these experiences. And one of the cool experiences we get to work on was uh, the 
Smithsonian experience. So Smithsonian Museum in Washington, D.C. is scanning all of their um, artwork and they scan Apollo, uh, Apollo 9? Well, not 9. Well, 13. Yes, Apollo 13 too. So you can be in those experiences and this tool was created for Smithsonian uh, to make them uh, easily create these kinds of experiences for their um, for their users. It's online and you can take a look at them on their website. So uh, can you tell us what what is the link to check out some of the Autodesk stuff? Um, so it's still in beta. It's uh, I think play.autodesk.com. Okay. And then uh, visor.io. And then there was one other one that was mentioned. Yes. Mer that's from Amazon. Yes. It's also in uh, beta. So you will have to ask for permission. Uh, yeah, order this is much faster to give you the permission. Sumerian, I, it took me forever to get it. Is it S U M A R I A N? S U M E R I A N. Yes. Okay. Yeah, well, I'll definitely make sure to uh, post those. I mean, it's, it's it's very exciting to see some of the you know some of the more top people sort of like leading the initiative. I love it when we look at technologies, you know, and it's like it's funny when people. I, maybe it's not so funny. I find it amusing because I'm not hurt by it financially. But you know, you have these standards, and then you know, there's like three competing standards, and then everybody just decides to go to one, and another company might have spent you know five hundred million dollars on it. We saw this with the, um, what are they called? The, uh, you know, the, the charging without anything. Oh yeah. The, the, um, uh, speed charge, Q charge, what it was it called? The thing where you can charge with mats and you don't yeah. have to plug in whatever, whatever that thing is called. Yeah. yeah. Inductive that charging. I, I think it's a good thing because it forces uh, the developers to create, you know, more use, usable apps and, you know, better quality apps. It's good yeah. to have. So good lesson is you don't have to spend more than, let's say, $20 or so to actually start playing with this technology. But if you want to get crazy, you know, you could buy the whole art store and just spend three grand on technology, too. Right. Um, and then be my friend and invite me over to try it. That'd be good. <laughs> yes. We just have been sitting there for hours, not talking to you, just like drooling. He hasn't showered for, you know, 48 hours, <laughs> you know, just uh, sleeping, waking up and then that's, chipping away at something. That's pretty much every day. <laughs> True. You could do RX in that. Oh, you can, we could visualize RxJS in, you know, in virtual reality. That'd be amazing. That'd be good. No more marbles. What is this marbles crap? Is it our next talk? <laughs> yeah, I am. Uh, that's what I, would, I actually always thought that uh, like WebVR would be the only use case I could ever think of in my head would be to visualize very, very dense information. Like when you have to do data visualization and the, the, the data that you have is just too dense to fit in a flat two dimensional chart of some sort. Like that was in my head. That was the only thing I could ever think of. The, the other use cases you, you, you were talking about were way more amazing than anything that I I thought about it. Oh, I've got some piles of data and I need to visualize it in some meaningful way that I can quickly make a decision on. But really I don't know how quick it would be to be like, hold on, let me let me look at the data. Okay, yeah, this is it's looking pretty bad over here. Like I I don't know. Maybe it would be cool. But. I like it. It's almost like managers managing workflows too, right? Like imagine if Imagine if you have, you know, uh, factory workers and there's a thousand of them or something like that, and you just sort of need to quickly see who's failing. You know, it'd be nice to just stick on your desk and be like, there's a red right there. It's Ben. He's not working. Why aren't you yeah. working, Ben? It's because you're drawing things for me. <laughs> any Anything we missed um, in terms of talking about uh, this or any, you know, any any pointers? There's so many cool things. I don't know. They're great examples. And um, if you can try VR, try AR. Um, if you could find find it on your phone. And there are so many apps that might work in most of the Android. Um, and it's such a cool technology. Just start using it. Don't be afraid. I'm so still so surprised that so many people never uh, use it, especially around here. I made. Yuri Goldstein try it for the first time. Uh, I, I have a video of it. <laughs> it was pretty easy to watch. 
it's yeah, like, generally speaking, it's it's not that unapproachable anymore. Uh, especially A frame makes it so much more approachable than anything before it has ever done. Um, Sumerian makes it very approachable. Poly tilt brush make it very approachable. Just try it out, play around with it. And you don't have to invest in a gamer like PC and Oculus Rift and HTC Vive and whatever. Get yourself a phone. Get yourself a cardboard. They are like five bucks when you order from China, I guess, or even cheaper. And yeah, try try playing around with it. Well, five bucks and then all the Switzerland taxes. They're not coming from Switzerland. You just get them from China for free. Uh, basically, shipping is free, no taxes, whatever. It's five bucks. It's under the limit for taxes and uh, and uh, customs. The, the US just we can pretty much bring anything from China here that we want. They don't they don't really tax it very much. Mm -hmm. Just just exactly. when you go to Switzerland, you try to you try to import reality. They don't like that. <laughs> okay well very cool um just you know reminder again of where you can follow these folks and uh stalk them on the internet so that they can answer all the amazing questions for you uh martin is at geekonaut so like astronaut but geekonaut with a g33 yeah. and aut and then uh aisha goal is at ays something a something <laughs> Um, and then Ben, if you want to troll him to make you things, uh, you can follow him at Ben Lush on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And then you can follow me at Lady Lee on Twitter as well. Uh, we're hoping to play more around with the technology and um, sort of see how we can integrate it. I like I like uh Twitter handle, by the way. Uh, we, we've been friends for a while, right, Aishagul? And like, I, I swear to God, every time I try to spell her name, I have to butcher it. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Like, you'd think I would learn eventually, but like on Twitter, I'm like, oh, just. I will ask something good. Got it. Being in confidence about it is good because uh, I had it at a conference. Like someone said, "Oh, I know how to spell this." Never checked it, and then spelled it totally. Wrong. No, I don't. I don't pretend to. Yeah, it's it's fine. I'm. I, I. If someone was from somewhere else and they were trying to spell Benjamin and they had a hard time, I would completely understand now. Like I get it. <laughs> it's it's tricky. I have a hard time spelling it. I enjoy bad spelling and bad pronunciation of it. Yes, it's fun. I know. Well, very good. Thanks, everyone, for listening to this episode of the Modern Web Podcast. Um, you know, hope you listen to more. Maybe one day I'll do an entire podcast with my new Southern accent that I got in in VR. Somehow picked that one up. The little Tracy's moved to North Carolina, and she's. She, um... <laughs> She's not mocking you if you're listening to this. She she really likes it. Yes. I'm fixing to keep this accent. <laughs> fixing to fixing it. I yeah. done learned it pretty well. <laughs> right? So, it's so good. Yeah. It's good. With the cooking too. The southern cooking. Oh man, I've been doing so much southern cooking. I didn't realize how many fried chicken and biscuits. It is not like it it's a what are they what are they a stere stereotype? Okay. It's the truth. I ate a lot of biscuits and fried chicken. That could also be the boyfriend, though. I'm not sure. <laughs> All right. Wait, the fiance. The fiance, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> okay, well, again, very good. You can follow um, and, and find more of these podcasts on modern.web.com. That's M O D E R N D O T web.com. Um, or you can check our YouTube. So we'll talk to you later. Thanks for listening. <laughs>